You're watching Oilers Nation every day with Tyler Remchuk. Your one-stop shop for all things Oilers. Whole show's brought to you by Charm Diamonds. Let's get into it with the lead. <laughs> Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome into Oilers Nation every day, live on the Oilers Nation YouTube, live from the Sports Closet Studio. We have a new sign to put up in the studio, and it's like a big Sports Closet Studio thing. So look forward, oh. looking forward to that. Shout out to our friends at the Sports Closet. Uh, welcome into the program. The Oilers are coming off a loss. I'm coming off a dub, Liam. Yeah? Nice. Yeah? That's ah, good. That's good. Uh, thank you to everybody saying congratulations in uh, in the YouTube chat. It was a fun weekend for me, and a big shout out to you two for keeping a secret for a very long time. Uh, yeah, to be honest, if I had told anybody, nobody would have known what I was talking about. None of my friends know who you are. Who would I have told? Yeah, I mean, that's a good point as well. But Tyler, All of my friends know who you are. <laughs> also a decent point. Um, Keep my it- work life and social life separate. It's very easy. Yeah, uh, it was it was a fun weekend. It was, a, as you guys know, because you were basically the only people I could vent to about this stuff. It was stressful at times, mm-hmm. um, but Charm Diamonds made the whole thing really smooth. Can't thank them enough. They got the perfect ring that Amber wanted. Um, yeah, it, it was a great weekend. So big shout out to Amber and a big shout out to Charm Diamonds and a big, 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 big shout out to uh, our girl Kennedy, who was my photographer for this one. It really was a nation event. Maddie from marketing helped with some of the planning, like all of this stuff. Um, I, I was there when the ring was purchased. Yeah, Liam, Liam and I, Liam came with me to Charm Diamonds <laughs> to pick out the ring, which was fun. Um, and they did, they had a great turnaround. Like again, custom ring built and delivered in less than four weeks. Hello, Charm Diamonds. Um, there's also, and I should have sent this one. I practiced on you in the office beforehand. We did. I said no. Yeah. So- Thank goodness you went the other way for you. Yeah, yeah, no, I got the I got the answer that uh that I wanted. So again, Charm Diamond Centers, <laughs> you guys, Kennedy, everyone helped make this go really smooth. And Amber and I had a really fun weekend of celebrating. I I posted it yesterday, but it happened on Friday. Um, so I kind of we had the whole weekend, went to the Oilers game, had yeah, you did had show. a nice dinner together. Um, had like a night with with both of our friends, kind of, which was another nice surprise through like a surprise engagement mm-hmm. party for her on uh, Friday night. Um, no, it looked really good. I'm very happy for the, for the two of you. My my girlfriend was very happy as well. My dad left a comment on your Instagram. Page. I saw, I saw. <laughs> so he was very invested. My mom called me about it and asked if it was true. I was like, well, she called you. <laughs> she called me and it was like, oh, I, they they got engaged. And I was like, yep, <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> she uh, also, yeah, never mind. I'll tell you that one. After. My favorite but, part was in our group chat. You sent us the photo, and all <laughs> Liam responded and said was, "Did you get the steak at dinner?" <laughs> well, I did. I knew the engagement was happening. You yeah, know? like true. I knew that was yeah. going to go well. It was. It was inevitable. You guys are great. Well, how was the steak? How was the post game? Whoa! Look at that bird. It's Whoa. right in our window. Holy crap! That's spooky. That nah, actually gave me a bit of a. He looked in. He was trying to watch the show. <laughs> and he ate food. He was eating. Yeah, he was eating <laughs> some. You saw one, you saw the bird too. (laughs) Oh, wow. Whoa. That was freaky. Yeah, the bird was like right there. Was that Bran from Game of Thrones? (laughs) Nice. Uh, Whoa. Is that a sign? What does a black crow mean? I don't know. God, do we have to end the show? (laughs) All right. (laughs) Anyways, that really derailed us. Not that it takes a lot for uh for us to get derailed on this show, but big shout out to Charm Diamond Centers, and we're gonna keep uh we're gonna keep things going. Next up is our auction. I'm gonna be auctioning off a spot as one of my groomsmen. I'm gonna uh, bid. So so let the bidding start. Five hundred cents. God damn it, Liam. Uh, anyways, yeah, that was fun. If you want, whatever. I, it'll be a bigger thing on real life. I'll break all it down. I'll tell some stories on uh, on real life today. But for now, let's talk a little bit of oh, hot. Oh, yeah. I agree. A light goal today is uh, how many days have you guys been dating? I'm just kidding. 150. We're aiming big today. 150, 150 likes. 150 Hammer likes. the like button. So let's get that ride in early. We're at 23 
a few minutes into the show. So. All right, let's go. Get the likes up a little bit. Uh, let's get into things with a little recap of what went on Saturday night. Liam, it's brought to you by Service Credit Union, a home of the Service Big Share Contest. It is back. It is better than ever. It is the sixth year of the Service Big Share Contest, and it's your shot at winning $1 million just by saving in a daily banking account or saving in a TFSA, RRSP, investing in a GIC. Plenty of ways to save a service. They all get you in on a chance to win $1 million. You can even transfer your existing savings to service. Contest ends April 30th, 2024. Skill test required for rules. Visit service.ca slash win. Liam Edmonton takes on Colorado Saturday night. Mm -hmm. A big game. What some were calling a potential Western Conference final preview. And I I wouldn't put it past those two teams to get it there. The game was obviously, I think people took it a bit too far how disappointing they were with the ending of the game. Yeah. But fantastic game by both teams. I thought both goaltenders were the best players on the ice. Kind of just a you could kind of tell at some point, and it seems like an obvious statement with it going into the overtime that it was gonna take a superstar making a big time play to be the difference maker. And that's what the Colorado Avalanche got from Nathan McKinnon finding liking him. But I was thoroughly entertained. Yeah. Like for a low scoring game. And we talked on Friday, like mm -hmm. I, and I did hand up. I bet on over nine and a half goals in that hockey game. And I knew about 10 minutes in, I wasn't going to be hitting that Told bet, um, but that's okay. Oilers did hit their shot prop in that game. Shout out to them for racking up the shots on goal took till overtime, but they did it. Um, anyways, the scoring summary, Sean Walker gets on the board in the second period. It took until the basically 30-minute mark of that hockey game yeah. for someone to score. And, of course, it was Sean Walker. Of course it was. And it was a good goal by him, to his credit. And uh, NHL said put it on because, obviously, he got two. But Cody CC was on the ice for both goals against with Sean Walker. <laughs> so, very poetic. But he had a good game, and he fits the style of what Colorado wants, right? I think the others want to be a bit more structured in their defensive mm -hmm. unit and also like free reign where Colorado, they want to attack you with speed. And one of them, you can say which one works and which one doesn't, but I just don't think Sean Walker would have fit into what the others try to do. Yeah. Like again, it's, it's so funny that of course he goes and scores two goals against the Oilers. He gets the second one. They're his seventh and eighth goals on the year. So it's not he almost had a hat trick. He did almost have a hat trick. <laughs> it's just insane. But I was watching him in the first 30 minutes of that game before he scored. He jumps up in the rush a ton. Tons. What Oilers defenseman loves jumping up in the rush a ton? Darnell Nurse. I I almost, in a way, as dumb as this is going to sound, and you will flame me for it. I know there will be people who go at me in the comments. I don't think he would have been a good partner for Darnell Nurse. I really don't either. And I... Maybe they could have played him with Kulak and that would have been fine. But, but then also, you're giving up a first round pick to, for yeah, a third pair defenseman. Like I ultimately think where the Oilers went shopping on deadline leading up to the deadline was the right approach. I think getting the two centers and Henrik and Carrick was good. And then like now Vinny's obviously out for however long. It sounds like it's not as bad as it could be, but Stetcher will likely play tomorrow. And that's where the Oilers went and got. They got a puck moving guy in Stetcher. Not as good, but they got him. And again, Gregor made this point. It was going to cost you a first and CC to get Walker because that's what Colorado gave up first in a cap dump in Johansson. So it was going to cost you a first and CC. Are the Oilers better with Henrik, Carrick, and CC or just Walker? I, I mean, I think it's the obvious answer. And I think right now, after watching <laughs> Henrik, hasn't scored, obviously, after watching Walker burn you twice on Saturday, I could understand why you'd have a different opinion on it. But for me, I'm sitting there going, Three NHL players, and I do view Carrick as an NHL player. He's a fourth liner, but he's an NHL oh, player. Yeah. Cody sure. Cece is a third pairing D man, but he's an NHL D man. And Adam Henrique, to me, that sum is better than what Walker would have brought you on the third pairing. That definitely, definitely. And to defend Cece maybe a little bit, his minutes were obviously up slightly as well because of having to the Vincent Deane go out. So Look, I'm not going to sit here and pretend Sean Walker probably isn't a better player than Cody CC because I think I would be wrong with me, but it's not what happened. Yeah, Mulek says Walker and Toffoli, we would have been better. And yeah, I, I think if the second part of that deal I, I, is getting Toffoli, but they didn't pay up for Toffoli. They could have still paid up for Toffoli if they wanted to. I don't I, know if they were ever getting I it. I honestly disagree. I think this team is so much better with McLeod as a winger. I really do. And... 
we can argue until the sun doesn't shine anymore, but I think McLeod and Fogel were two of the best Oilers on Saturday. The way they were just buzzing around and really getting in on the four check and chasing down loose pucks, mm-hmm. I think they were fantastic. And I think that second line, the way it is, has made that team better. So I'll stand by. The addition of Henrik and Carrick is what's going to put this team over the edge. I totally yep. get it. Upgrading on CC would have been great. But what they did was still very, very good. Yeah. Uh, Fogel scores his 16th of the year. Bouchard's up to 49 apples now on the season, which is wild. Uh, But Fogel's got a 16th. He's going to be a 20-goal guy for this team this year, which, man, if you would have told me that at the start of the year, holy smokes. And bring Cassie and home chines in. That line has so much chemistry, and they do. And they started, for some reason, Chris Knobloch started splitting them up a little bit. I, I don't know why he doesn't just keep rolling with a consistent top nine, but... That's probably a conversation for another day. Sam Carrick finds the back of the net. His first as an oiler. He was fired up. This is a guy who has really never played meaningful hockey games in a season. And you could tell he's he's fired up to get that chance. Well, he's one away from 10 goals on the year. You know, like you look through that game for the Oilers and McDavid was minus three. And I'm not pointing the game on McDavid by any means, yeah. but the goals came from guys who you're not expecting. And I he, he, it was a great great play by him to get that get that to yep. the net and put it in. So yeah, good performance. Yeah, I, I liked what I saw from Carrick. We'll have more on him a little bit later in the show. But the Oilers got a nice little bump of depth scoring in that hockey game. It was surprisingly their big guns who could not find the back of the yeah. net in that game. And it wasn't for a lack of trying. That was, and this is going to sound so dumb because I sat and I criticized McDavid a little bit when he was on that point streak. I was like, he's not playing his best right now. He's not giving max effort on some nights. He's not taking over the games the way McDavid was. I thought on Saturday that was one of the best McDavid alone performances I've seen in a while. Even though he didn't get any points, he was just flying. He wanted that one. Oh, totally. I I thought he had a great game and was absolutely flying around. Mm -hmm. It was funny because I bet on Hyman's shot prop and the way McDavid was playing, he just wasn't passing Hyman at all, you know, really took away. But I thought he he had a strong game. You could kind of tell he wanted to to make a difference, you know, and be like, no, I am the best player in the league, not Nathan McKinnon. And ultimately, McKinnon had the last laugh. (laughs) Yeah. So let's get to it. It's our defining moment for Douglas Mattresses. Right now, if you head to douglas.ca slash Oilers Nation, Every mattress order is coming in with a free comfort sleep bundle. You get two memory foam pillows with pillow protectors, one luxurious cotton sheet set, and one mattress protector free with any mattress order. Just head to douglas.ca slash Oilers Nation. All their mattresses handcrafted in Canada, ensuring the highest quality materials and fastest delivery to you. And if you're in the market for a new mattress, why not support a locally owned and operated Edmonton Company loved by more than 200,000 Canadians with over 10,000 five-star reviews. Avoid pushy salesmen with easy online ordering and get Douglas delivered in a box to your doorstep with free shipping coast to coast to coast. Free shipping. Any coast you're on, they'll get it to you. Any coast. In Canada, coast to coast to coast. We should try that over the summer. Yeah, Liam will. You go to Vancouver. I'll go to Halifax. Oh, can we switch? I've really wanted to check I've out I've never Halifax. been to Halifax. Neither have I. But I do love Vancouver, so yes, gladly. I'll stay with Dave. Douglas.ca slash Oilers Nation. The moment of the game, sadly in overtime, was our Turi Lekkinen with half a second on the clock. But this goal doesn't happen without Nathan McKinnon making a whoop, beautiful play. And listen, there were mistakes on this goal from the Oilers. Evan Bouchard should probably know with that little time left on the clock, Take take the higher angle on McKinnon, but he also could have easily found Lekkinen from the other side. Like again, I I looked at that play and not a great look by Bouchard at all. No, but that is a world class player really deceiving him with that skate to stick move. Yeah, sometimes great players just make great plays, and it doesn't matter who they're going up against, right? And I, I think that's what McKinnon did, but. If you're Bouchard, you probably want to just contain him in that corner a little bit better. Like, like what was it? 0.5 seconds. Like, yep. People were giving Dryside a lot of crap on that too. And like, Dryside will give himself some crap. Yeah, and he should. And I think fine. he should. Yeah, and that's fine. But like the mistake comes there, and it leads to Dryside all coming in. Like I'm, not, yeah, I'm not saying he's not to blame. Yeah, I'm just saying the first mistake came from Bouchard. I, I think it's 50-50. I, 
I think if Drysdale back checks, we're not talking about a mistake by Bouchard. I think if Bouchard just takes the puck here and plays a little physical, we're not talking about a mistake well, from it, Drysdale. Either one of them could have made a play. Neither of them yeah, made a play. Yeah, but it's just a ripple effect of one or the other. But also, like, the people who lost their minds on Twitter, this was 0.5 seconds left in overtime. Is this was regulation? I fully understand. Too, yeah. I'd be very much more pissed off. But, like, this game was going to a shootout, which could have gone either way. Like, come on. Like, I, I'm. I'm totally over what happened. I think at the mm -hmm. end of the day, McKinnon made a fantastic play. There's two mistakes by the Oilers. They don't own up to it in their post game. And I think we just got to move on from it. Nuge scores on his breakaway. Connor scores on one of his chances. And then the doesn't hit the crossbar. Um, what was another one they had? Zach Hyman's goal doesn't get disallowed. Like, there's wow. so many things. And like, probably should have been disallowed. I'm not saying it shouldn't, but like, yeah. it was the Oilers played really well. But 64.5 minutes or whatever it would be, right? 64 like, minutes, 59.5 seconds. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Happens. Could have made it better plays, but also Colorado make mistakes too. There's a lot of this score two goals. Yeah, like I'm not sitting there all that concerned about that loss because oh, I thought I it was a good really game. Well. Pretty much every time these teams play, it, it's tight and it's going to overtime in most cases. They said this is the fourth yeah. time in a row. Crazy. Fourth in a row, they've gone to OT against the Avs. They play them tight. And again, this was a night where McDavid didn't score. Like, you get a little bit of product, you get one ounce of production from one of the big guns. And again, they played good. It, it was just a night where the bounce wasn't going for you. And those nights are going to happen. I credit the Oilers on a night where the bounces weren't going for them, finding ways to grind and stay in this game. Stuart Skinner was remarkable. I know you and I were talking about this before, but today on the DFO rundown, you know, Frank kind of said, you know, did the Oilers get outclassed in this matchup against Colorado? I don't view this at all as, as them getting outclassed. And I saw a little bit of that on Twitter and, and the Frank thing just popped into my head because yeah. I was listening to the, to his show today. But like I saw a little bit on Twitter, the Oilers won't be able to keep up with that team over a seven game series. And it's like, they absolutely would. I really do think that. I think so too. I don't, I think, I do think that'll be the Western conference finals. And I didn't know others will win more than zero games when they go and play them this time around. You know what I mean? Like, it was great. I thought Gorgiev made some exceptional saves. They did say multiple times on the broadcast that McCaw maybe was under the weather, so maybe that had a bit of influence on it. But Skinner made a great save on McCaw in the first period, too, on the power play, at the end of a power play, right through all the screens, and he came up on the other side. I, I couldn't disagree more with Frank, to be honest, and maybe we can talk to him on Wednesday when I believe he's coming on again. But... You go through and look, and the Oilers outshot the uh, Avalanche second line two to five. I know it's not a big margin, but like that's where the Oilers are going to be able to outcompete Colorado. Then yep. I think the Oilers are a better, deeper, a deeper team up front than Colorado. I would agree with that, yeah. and, and that's where I wanted to get to next. Daryl Sutter dropped in a comment. Both teams shut down the top yeah. players outside the winning goal, and again, that to me is why you point to the addition of Adam Henrique and go. That's why it's important to get him going. That's why you went out and got a guy like that. Because if you can shut down the other team's best players with McDavid and Drysaddle, you're going to need your third line to be a difference maker sometimes. Yeah, that third line, back to back games now, they've not been perfect by any mm -hmm. means, but outshot, they had one shot at five on five, outshot 12 to one. Yeah. So they've got to be better, but also they got a goal against Washington, granted the seventh goal, still a goal. They hit the crossbar against Colorado, which might have made it one nothing. So we'll call it two to 12. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I just think the people who were overreacting and saying this team can't compete, like the others are a great team as well, and took Colorado to literally the last second of the game. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. Your moment of the game is the OT winner for the Abs. It's brought to you by Douglas Mattress. You can get that free comfort sleep bundle with any mattress purchase at Douglas.ca slash Oilers Nation. The Oilers fall three two to the Colorado Avalanche and. Now they sit there, Liam, staring up at a Vancouver team who, guess what? Coming off a loss to the Washington Capitals, 5-3-2 and two in their last 10. In the last 10 games, the Oilers have gained another four points on the Vancouver Canucks, and here's the situation for the top spot in the Pacific Division. The Oilers are eight points back. The Oilers have three games in hand. They have one more game against Vancouver. So again, I know people on TikTok and Instagram were commenting, calling me a homer, saying we're insane whatever living in fairy tale world if we think the oilers have a shot at catching the canucks but it is the oilers control their own fate that is a fact you cannot argue against mm -hmm. if they win their games in hand and beat vancouver they own the tiebreaker they will be ahead of the canucks they'll have more wins 
They will. I just, I don't know. The Thatcher Demko thing is such the, the biggest difference maker, isn't it? Like that's going to determine if, if Vancouver can keep kind of pulling away from the Oilers. But this week, they basically have the same schedule. Like Oilers play uh, Montreal tomorrow and then Buffalo on Saturday, uh, Thursday, sorry, at least on Saturday. And then uh, Vancouver play Buffalo tomorrow and then Montreal on Thursday. So it's going to be an interesting little stretch here, but I think they can do it. I'm believing more and more as we as uh, the days get numbered here, but I wasn't on board with it maybe a week or two ago, but the Oilers have points in every single game this month besides that crappy Columbus game. They're on a really good run at the moment, and I think Chris Knobloch's win percentage with the Oilers is like 740 or something like that. It's crazy. It's crazy. It crazy. And they can do it. I think they'll catch them, but I think it will come down. They'll have to beat Colorado in one of their two last games at least once, and they'll have to beat Vancouver, obviously, when they go head-to-head. Yep. The Oilers have some easy matchups. The Canucks have some easy matchups as well. Um, just looking, I know a lot of you over in the Charm Diamond Center's YouTube chat are talking about, would you rather play, like, no, let's stay in second and let's play the Kings, not the Golden Knights. Listen, I'm still sitting there. The Golden Knights and Kings are dead tied. 79 points in 67 games. Both have 590 points percentages. Uh, both have the same, or LA has one more regulation win than, uh, than the Golden Knights. So they would hold the tiebreaker. But, Sitting there, I'm of the belief Vegas is going to get hot and pass LA at some point. I still think that's likely going to happen. I would like to go for the first spot so you have home ice in each of the first two rounds. And hey, if you can catch Vancouver at 92, who's to say you can't catch all three of Winnipeg, Colorado, and Dallas at 91? Having home ice for the whole playoffs would be great. Oh, yeah. And do you know what, too? Like, I don't really care if they play in round one because eventually you're going to have to, if you want to win the Stanley Cup, you have to be yep. good teams. And I don't think we can just ride off LA. Let's not forget they shut us out for nothing last time we played them. Yeah. I knew it was trailed two nothing the other time they played them. Like they're a tough team to play against too. And I think the Pacific is a just a really good division, whichever team you're gonna go play. But LA this week, Chicago tomorrow, then Minnesota and Tampa Bay, and then the Vegas Golden Knights have Tampa Bay, Seattle, and Columbus. Interesting stretch. It's going to be interesting. I'm still not convinced Vegas, uh, all at LA now, I guess, if they both the same amount of points, I didn't even realize. Yeah. Playoffs isn't a lock for either of those teams. I'll just say that. Mulek says, give me Nashville. Bring Cassian home says Vegas has a harder schedule. No, I'd have to look into the strength of schedule numbers, but. Um, yeah, Vegas does have a pretty tough schedule. They played Vancouver a couple of times, Colorado, Minnesota a couple of times. A lot of their games are on the road. Mm-hmm. Um, someone pointed out, bring Cassian home in the chat. Stetcher in for DeHarnay at yeah. practice. So, but, uh, Rashad said, uh, Dayane was taking shots well and skating and kind of part of it, just not part of the full practice. Well, our insider bagged milk. Oh, yes. Came through with the news. Vinny broke his finger in that fight against the, uh, Colorado Avalanche. He went toe to toe with Manson. That was a great tilt. Vinny looked was. down early, got back up and, and stayed competitive. Really got him once clean. Um, but Vinny broke his finger in that fight, which is why he didn't play in the third period. Here's Knobloch on DeHarnay. He looked good, said he felt good. We'll talk to the trainers and see. He also added he wants to keep Stetcher in rotation and would like to play him on the right side. Remember, in his debut, he played on the left side. So Yeah, I, I'd, I'd assume Vinny doesn't play tomorrow against Buffalo. It's probably fair. I would, I would I make would, that I, assumption, too. I'd actually be shocked if he played all week. Give him the week off. Like, what is it? It obviously matters, and I actually bet he would really like to play against Montreal on the mm -hmm. on Thursday. But at the end of the day, like, yes, we've talked about the Oilers chasing first in the Pacific, but they're pretty much locked in for second as long as things continue to trend in their way. So, like, let the big man heal. No need to rush him. Something goes wrong. Yep. You lose him for longer. You've got stature for this reason. Let, let's see what he's got. You know, we judged him after his first game, and he wasn't good by any means. Two penalties, pretty pretty bad screen on Skinner on the first goal against Washington, but I'd let the kid run. I, I want to see, I want to give Stetcher oh. a little bit of runway yeah. on the right side, so why not? Just play him both games this week. Let Vinny heal up. He's been playing a lot of hockey this season. I, I think he could do well some uh, with some rest. Someone in the Charm Diamond YouTube chat said the Habs game is tomorrow. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's Habs tomorrow, Buffalo oh, on Thursday. I was still looking. I was thinking the Washington, uh, Vancouver schedule. I just ah, read. Ah, yeah. Whoops, the daisies. 
Mm -hmm. Um, Tristan, talk about Jack Campbell. Had another good weekend. Good for Jack. Seems to be getting his game on uh, the right level here and has been for a bit. And Ryan Holt was uh, talking about how he's been a great guy in the room too. So it's great to see Campbell making a positive impact somewhere in the organization. Very good. He cannot come up to the Edmonton Oilers and sell the playoffs because they simply cannot afford him. Yeah, that, and that's the bottom line with all of that. Like, that's it. Uh, all right, Liam. Jack Campbell's feeling good. It's a Monday. You and I are feeling good. And a big reason why you and I are feeling good is because about 10 days ago, we started trying AG1. We did. And it's been it's become a part of our morning routine now together. Yep. We've been talking a little bit about how good and how fresh we're feeling. For me, it was sluggishness in the middle of the day. Felt like I needed to start taking a little bit better care of my body. So I wanted to get a little bit of that. It also helps with stress levels. I found I just because maybe I'm not as sluggish, I can look at a problem and get through it a little bit quicker. So AG1 has helped me in a bunch of different ways since I started drinking it. It's been helping me focus. It's been helping me with those stress levels. And that's because it is a foundational nutrition supplement that supports your body's universal needs. Uh, We were talking to Jay Downton earlier. He talked about gut optimization. He's in too. The office is becoming an AG1 office. It's a, it's a good way to kick off the day, I've found. Kind of yeah. get into your routine in the mornings and have your AG1. Quite tasty, if I do yeah. so myself. I actually quite enjoy it. Well, when you read something that's like a nutrition supplement, you're kind of like, oh, am I going to have to like grind through yeah. gulping this not down? But this no, one. not at all. Um, so not only did I replace my multivitamin with AG1, but I love that every scoop it includes a bunch of different benefits, vitamin C and zinc to support my immune health, magnesium for stress support as well. So I would recommend AG1. It's been uh, it's been turning me in the right direction health wise. I like it. And it's very easy. Just put a little scoop in. Mm-hmm. Shake it up. Yeah, you were cruising Let's around go. the office on deadline day. Just sip it on your AG1. Ready to go. It's very good. Uh, if there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. And that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner on the show. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year <laughs> supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash Oilers Nation. Once again, that is drinkag1.com slash Oilers Nation. Check it out. Be like Liam and I. Start your day with AG1. Tyler Mulek, the real or fake one, I don't know anymore. Ask, do you guys actually use what you advertise? I'm actually not kidding. Liam walked around on deadline <laughs> yeah. day drinking his AG1. Uh, I shop at Sports Closet all the time. I sleep on I a Douglas mattress use, every night. I use DoorDash over the weekend. As did Douglas I. mattress, yeah, we have both of one of I those. love Gre- Greta. Great. He loves Greta. Trust Aaron, me. Aaron loves Greta so much he can barely talk today. <laughs> Who else we got? I use them all. Like this is no. I drive a Sherwood people. Ford vehicle. You literally do. Yes. You yes. can see me on the road. Yeah, we. Uh, no, we don't. Um, I'm going to Jasper this weekend. You are going, going to, to check Jasper. out Jasper. That's why you needed this Friday off. Yeah. No Liam on the show Friday. There you go. Come on, we're not just lying Come to everybody. On. Why would we? What would be the point? <laughs> exactly. I don't know. Uh, let's move on to the Star Mechanical guest line. We haven't had to use Star Mechanical in a while because I haven't, I haven't had a plumbing emergency. But Which is good and bad. It's just, But yeah. I know that they'll be there. You know that they're there. <laughs> Calvin Bigger, Tyler used the propose this weekend. I got <laughs> yes. the ring from Charm. I went to Charm and did the custom <laughs> ring building. There's no more proof than that. My engagement was uh, with a partner. That is very funny. Yeah, uh, see? Come on. We don't ask you guys to we wouldn't ask you guys to do this if we didn't do it ourselves. <laughs> yeah. 100 percent Okay, let's get to the star mechanical guest line. Eminence number one plumbing and heating company. They got 24-7 emergency support. You can trust them. You can trust them. Residential commercial, they do it all. Starmechanical.ca for more information. Zach Lang joins the program on the Star Mechanical guest line. You know him, you love him from Oilers Nation. He did pregame the other day with Boardsy. Let's start with that game against Colorado. Liam and I were just debating. Frank said the Oilers got outclassed. I didn't view that as the Oilers getting outclassed. What did you make of their effort against Colorado? Well, first and foremost, Tyler, burying the lead. Congratulations on the engagement, my man. It's awesome stuff. Very, very happy for both you guys. Um, I thought it was a great game overall, and I absolutely think, as Liam was saying earlier, that the Oilers can keep pace with Colorado. And I think it's the fact that the Oilers have done this for a long time. You, if you remove those that four-game sweep by Colorado in the playoffs, in the last nine regular season games, the Oilers are 3-1-5 and five against Colorado, and have actually outscored them 27-26. So this is two very, very good teams that can play at a very high level. 
Um, I thought it was a great game overall, probably the best game of the season, I might say, uh, just from like a pure entertainment standpoint. I thought all four lines did did their jobs out there. Like I, I got really no complaints with that game. What do you make of this forward group at the moment? It seems like the Oilers have been able to maybe even build three three strong scoring lines, and it seems like that fourth line is contributing quite positively to you. Do you think that's the truth? Yes and no. I mean, uh, Boardsy, I know you're probably got a smile on your face right now because we've been banging the drum of that Oilers top six for a little while. I really like the way that it's set up. I think your top line is your top line. They're one of the best in the league. I love the second line of McLeod, Dreisaitl, and Fogel. Uh, I think, you know, Fogel and McLeod help elevate Dreisaitl's game a little bit because I think Dreisaitl can kind of slow the game down a little bit too much sometimes. Having some guys with him that can kind of play with some pace is a good thing. The third line, well, the jury's still out on that. They've only got a couple of games together right now. The nice thing is that they're outscoring the opposition 2 nothing, but all of their underlying numbers are absolutely terrible. Uh, they've actually got a 16% expected goal share together, uh, which is really, really, really bad. So uh, I'd be willing to give them a couple more games and see if they can kind of gel and click a little bit. But I also think that Noblon and company kind of need to be on their feet and ready to make some changes to that third line. The Sam Carrick goal, I mean, that that was absolutely beautiful. Like, I guess that's why you trade a first-round pick for Sam Carrick, right? Uh, it's <laughs> like that, right? I mean, uh, it was a really, really nice play all around. Great stuff from Corey Perry down low. Um, and Carrick, I mean, getting body position, that was a great goal. Like, when was the last time it felt like a fourth-line guy on the Oilers scored a goal like that? It feels like it's been a long time. So uh, the third line's a bit of a concern for sure, but I think we need to see a little bit more of a sample size before there's any real definitive statements there. Is there something you would change to the third line right now to maybe improve it? Or do you think, like you said, like, just give them a few more games. Do you think that's what it just has to be at the moment? Yeah, I think so. I think you just got to give them a few more games and kind of see what you can do. You know, maybe you swap Yanmark and and Connor Brown there at some point. Um, but I, I don't know. That's It's kind of the tough thing because, you know, you don't really have a ton of speed in that bottom six anymore. Um, and that's something that kind of is a little bit of a problem for the Oilers, I think. I don't, I don't think you need like a ton of speed and a bunch of burners out there, but you need some guys that can play with some pace and help move the puck up the ice. And I think that's one thing that the third line kind of struggles with right now. Evander Kane, he's not really a carrier of the puck anymore. Uh, Connor Brown, he can do it decently. Henry, again, we still need to see some more from him to really get a, a definitive feeling for, for how he's going to be on this club. Yeah, I, I did not have Sam Carrick scoring a goal before Adam Henrique in an Oilers jersey. I don't think, you know, no one would try to convince you that Henrique's been, you know, good or as advertised since joining the team. But I know he was on After Hours with Oak and DeBrusque talking about how you know, his wife gave birth to their second child nine days before he was really? traded. Like, he's going through a lot. He was getting choked up talking about it. So I'm willing to give Henrique a little bit of time here to sort through this. I'm not concerned with how he's looked so far, because I know there's a better player there. Are you concerned a little bit, Zach, with what you've seen from Henrik early on? No, I don't think so. I think you make a great point there. Like, that's a huge adjustment for anybody to make in life, right? You think if if your significant other gave birth nine days ago, and then all of a sudden you have to move to a whole other country, like, that's a, just from a personal level, that's a lot to be kind of going through. Throwing into the mix, learning a brand new team and a brand new system and a new organization. And the nice thing is, is he's got a familiar face in Carrick out there. So, uh, you know, at least that probably helps him a little bit in terms of getting comfortable. But look, I think Henrique's been a really consistent middle six player for a very long time in the NHL. Uh, and he had has been having a really solid season in, in Anaheim before he came over to Edmonton here. So he probably just needs a little bit more time to adjust and kind of get his feet wet before we really see. You know, I almost wonder, like, what if the Oilers... And I understand, like, the cap situation of it all and having to try and accrue every damn penny that the Oilers could. But it almost feels like the Oilers may have been better suited making this kind of a trade like a month before they actually did and get these guys a little bit more acclimatized. Because the thing is, is we knew what the Oilers needs were like, we knew them since the beginning of the regular season. So uh, it's a bit of a double edged sword there, but yeah, I think we just need a little more time with, uh, with uncle Rico. Yeah. We have someone in the chat clamoring for Philip Broberg to come up. I think that's unlikely. I think they're going to give, uh, they're going to give Troy Stetcher a run here on the right side. They got him for a reason. But the other name people are clamoring for is Dylan Holloway. Could he be a guy that helps on the third line? Like, if you were to put some speed in Holloway, flip Kane to the right side, I know that's not his necessarily natural wing, but would Holloway, Henry Kane maybe be better? Like, could Holloway's speed mask some of the issues Kane has on that third line even? 
Yeah, I think so for sure. Like, I think if you look at Hill, uh, Holloway, he's a young, offensively talented player who's got speed. He can carry the puck on his stick. The thing is, is like, he just needs to play, right? And it feels like up to this point of the season, the Oilers coaching staff hasn't really trusted him in that center position yet. And that's the reason why he's with the Bakersfield Condors playing up the middle right now. Bruce Kerlock wrote a, a prospect report yesterday, Sunday, as he always does. And Holloway's looked really good playing up the middle there in the last week or two since he's been assigned to the Condors. So I think more than anything, Holloway just needs to play. Ideally, yeah, it would be great to have him as the 3C. But again, the coaching staff doesn't really seem to have a lot of trust or a lot of faith in him right now, which it's a whole other debate that you can kind of get into with that. But at the end of the day, I think for Holloway, like with Broberg, just getting a lot of ice time is the most important thing that he can do for his own development right now. Maybe you reevaluate in the final five, 10 games of the season and maybe call him up at that point and get him up and see how we can play at center with those guys. I do like the idea of that, that third line, Tyler. I, I do think you're onto something there though. Yeah. I, I think that is 1000% the right approach. I think we'd all be in agreement. It's like keep giving him 22 minutes a night. There's no reason right now to bring up Holloway and go back to giving him 12 minutes a game. Keep him rolling. Keep him confident in Baco. And if you want to build up some chemistry, then boom, you call him up in the final three games of the season, stick him with Henrique, say you guys got nine periods to figure this thing out and you're rolling together in the playoffs. I do think some consistency would be good at some point with the lines, which again goes back to just leave that third line alone for right now. I, I'm not a big fan of constantly blending the lines just because maybe they don't work for one game. I totally agree with you on that. Like, I think that you need to leave the lines together. And we heard that from Chris Knobloch, and we saw it from him when he came in in November, on November 13th, when at that introductory press conference, he talked about finding consistency in the lines and finding consistency in that forward group because the line blender had been completely out for those first dozen games of the season. And it was an absolute mess that first stretch of the year. Everybody knows how poorly that went for the Oilers. So I think right now, like the Oilers did during that 16 game winning streak, uh, just keep it simple, roll these lines, see what they can do. Like that Oilers sec, the second line worked so well during that 16 game winning streak. And they're just picking up exactly where they left off. They are dominating the pace of play. They're looking like they could be a first line on their own, right? So, you know, if the Oilers have a one, a and a one B top six lines and then you know you got your third line and your fourth line that's going to be a pretty good position for the Oilers to be in come the playoffs and I think especially with McLeod too like you know the offensive game may not be his strong suit right now but man he's just such a good defensive hockey player like it's just so important I think to have him alongside Drysaddle in that top six what do you make of the idea of re-signing Warren Fogel I, I think if you go and look at the the play is available this summer. There isn't any significant upgrades in the ballpark that the others can make, which I would make believe that Fogel is probably your best option. What do you make of that? Yeah, I fully agree with you. Look, the Edmonton Oilers have a salary cap crunch coming this off season that I don't think enough people are really talking about right now. I'm probably going to get flamed in the chat for even mentioning this as I have in the articles that I've written, but there's a very realistic possibility that Evander Kane is a cap casualty this summer, there's a very good chance that the Oilers try and trade him here. Because again, if you look at his contract too, you know, he's going to have two years left. He has a, a full no move clause up until February 28th of next season. But what's interesting is that the salary in his final two seasons are the lowest of his entire contract. And there's no signing bonuses for Evander Kane after July 1st of this year. So there's a very real possibility that the Oilers look to move on from him this summer. And I understand the, the strengths of what Evander Kane can bring to the lineup. But what we've also seen this entire season is what we see in big power forwards, where their game deteriorates with age. Evander Kane right now doesn't feel like the same Evander Kane that we were seeing in October, November, December, early on this season. So the hope is, of course, that he can bring it in the playoffs like he did a few seasons ago when he arrived in Edmonton, scored a bunch of goals, and everything's hunky-dory, and then you have some more difficult decisions to make. But I absolutely think that the Oilers should be trying to re-sign Warren Fogel, Liam. I think if you look at the body of work of the last number of years, he's gotten better every single season here in Edmonton. He's a solid defensive player, and his offensive game, especially this year, career year Warren Fogel, has hit another level. So I would love to see the Oilers try and figure out a way to re-sign him because I think he's the perfect middle six winger who can kind of bump up. He can play on the third line. He can play on the penalty kill, play a little power play two minutes uh, for the 30 seconds that they get every single game. Uh, he's a very versatile player for me in my eyes. And I think he's somebody uh, that I'd love to see back next season. 
would you do three by three point two five for Fogel? Lock it up every day of the week. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like that's that's a that's a great great contract. I think for the Edmonton Oilers, could Fogel get a little bit more? Yeah, he might be able to. He could probably get up around four million dollars for similar years, three four years. But again, hey, look at what's going on here in Edmonton right now, right? I mean, I think we might see that over the next year or two, and we've already seen it where players are leaving a little bit of money on the table to kind of join this team. So Fogel's got chemistry with a lot of the guys. He's close with McLeod. He's close to his close with Bouchard, that sort of stuff kind of matters too. And what's interesting is like, I almost wonder if Fogel was expecting to get traded ahead of the deadline. If you listen to a lot of his press conferences and stuff like that, or, or his interviews rather, um, you could hear like a little bit of trepidation in his voice. Like you could hear some of that worry. And after the trade deadline, he kind of said that he felt like a bit of a sense of relief that he was still with the team. So I think he's somebody who wants to be here. And I guess this summer we'll see how bad he really does want to be an Edmonton Oiler. Yeah, that's fair. And just quickly, I want to circle back to the other side of this conversation, the Kane stuff. I, I do think there's going to be a tough conversation at some point this summer. His trade protection could make it difficult if he doesn't want to play ball in that regard. If he says, no, I want to be here. I want to try win. Um, but the salary part, I think that was obvious. That was intentional by the Oilers to knock down that yeah. salary in the later years. But in the immediate little future here with Evander Kane, I've seen some people who are like, look at how he's dragging down his line mates, all of this stuff. I don't think you can put Evander Kane on the fourth line because we've seen how he reacts when you do that, when you bury him lower in the lineup. But now I think it's it's better because at least you're putting him with Henrique and it's like, hey, you can be a third line player for us. You and Henrique can actually be a duo. You're going to get meaningful minutes. But I don't think a disgruntled Evander Kane does anything for you this year versus if you can get him going a little bit, get him motivated, get him skating – that's still a guy who he scores in bunches and he's shown with the Oilers. He can score in bunches in the playoffs, seven goals, that playoff round against the Kings. Yeah. I know we're two years removed from that. I still think you kind of, I look at Evander Kane as a guy who you don't punish. And even though it's maybe not fair to other guys, you need to give him minutes to try to get him going. Cause he be, he's good when you get him going. Where do you come out on that? Would you sit there and go, Hey, if he's a fourth liner, he's a fourth liner. Do you think you have to keep spoon feeding him minutes? I think he's fine on the third line where he is right now. I don't think he needs to be any lower in the lineup. Again, this is a guy who always seems to be at his best when he's getting a lot of um, touches of the puck, right? You look at when he's in the top six, that's when he's having his most offensive success, when he can have the puck on his stick a little bit more. And again, I, I think you made a good point too, trying to motivate him to be on that third line. I mean, we, we, we remember what happened early in the season when he kind of got moved down to the third line and he had some like weird comments during the intermission of one of those games where that happened. And then, of course, on the Spit and Chicklets podcast a couple of weeks ago, there was like some kind of conversations they were having where with Elliot Friedman, where Friedman said that they may have considered doing something with Kane or at least took a look into the market to see what was out there and if there was interest in him. I think at the end of the day, this is a guy who can be a big time performer for the Oilers. We've seen that in the playoffs, but we're also two years removed of that, right? Like last year in the playoffs, he only scored three goals in 12 games and he was playing in the Oilers top six in, in the playoffs. And again, early this year, he had some strong showings. He put the puck in the, the net a lot, but his scoring rates have dipped over the course of the season here. So there, there's legitimate concern, I think, with where Evander's game, Evander's game is at right now. And I think it's up to him, too, to, to kind of prove that he deserves to still be here and deserves to be, you know, worthy of the ice time that he's getting. He's got to make the most of his opportunities and seize the moment because if that third line can get going and chip in a goal every two games, every three games, that's going to be huge, especially come playoff time, right? So the Oilers really need that third line to get going, and Evander Kane needs to be the driver of that bus. Yep, I think I'm with you on that. Zach Lang on the Star Mechanical guest line. What's coming up for you on the site over the next couple of days? Yeah, great question. Uh, you know, just a lot of the usual stuff here. Um, I've been working on some stuff about looking at Dreisaitl and McDavid and, and them playing together versus playing apart. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get that put together here in the next couple of days. But uh, yeah, otherwise, status quo content-wise over on the website. So lots of good stuff up right now. Of course, early today, the others announced the signing of Connor Unger. Uh, so that's pretty exciting for the goaltending ranks in the organization right there. So uh, lots of stuff going on, as always, on the site. OilersNation.com is where you can read him. He's all across the network. He's on Jay's Nation as well. That's getting going in a bit. Zach, thanks for hopping on the Star Mechanical guest line. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. There you exactly. go. Zach Lang. And the only guy who you can trust to show up in a Kirkland hoodie and a Team North America hat. That's Zach Lang drip. <laughs> 
I didn't even know. Oh, yeah. The chat noticed. Someone was like, that is a sick hat. And it is. That Team North America merch is nasty. That Team North America was nasty. Yeah. Go look at that one if you got some free time today. Uh, Short for giant question of the show. Just piggybacking off the last question we (laughs) threw, Zach, there. Should the Oilers re-sign Warren Fogle? Let me throw you this. Let's say Fogle's $3.5 All right. Okay. We'll go up from what we gave Zach. The three is. Yeah. Okay. What is better, Fogle at 3.5 or Kane at 5 point, whatever? Fogle. Really? Fogle's 27. Hmm? He's coming into his prime days of his career, and I think one thing that is being maybe just thrown to the side a little bit is he's never played with dry saddle before and now those two have like great chemistry together and it's so obvious when they're away from each other like mm-hmm. completely different players arguably both of them i think he makes dry saddle better and dry saddle obviously makes him better so yeah i would pay him i would honestly pay him i'd pay him upwards of four million that's the most i would go if he was like hey well i'll stay for four years for four million Ooh. I think four is rich for me. I don't know. I, trying I'm to, not against mm, it. Like, I, it's four, a guy who doesn't play any four. power play and stuff like that, and I get it, but yep. I don't know. I wouldn't be totally against it. I, I really like Warren Fogle. Mm-hmm. I do, too. He's having a great year. He's changed my perspective on him totally. We'll see. Um, I, I know there's a bit of a worry because people like, this is his best year, and he's going into a contract. It's like, yes, but he's also still relatively young. Yep. I think he'll be solid. If you want, like, simple <laughs> cap math, if you can pull off, if you can pull off the cap dumps, take Kane's cap hit, mm-hmm. move it to a $5 million defenseman, take CeCe's cap hit, give it to Fogel. And he, maybe you I, get you yourself two fourth round picks in the process. You know, what? if you want to even keep going down that a little bit, you take uh, Cody CeCe's money, and you move also Kulak as well, and just kind of give your third pairing defenseman a little bit less. It gives you more to give Fogel. And like other, I know these other guys down yeah, the yeah. road, but this team came back this year looking basically the same as it was last year. It will not look this way no, next season. I think there'll be big, yep. big, big changes. Daryl Sider, Fogel can disappear for 20, 30 games easy. Van uh, Kane. Van Kane hasn't scored in a month, and you were just talking about how he's a top six player. And at least with like, Fogel, the, the the efforts there. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I'm saying it quietly, but like I don't want to be that guy. But when Fogel's in the bottom six, he skates hard. Yeah, like he and Kane plays hard, and Kane we're, and Mulek said, "Don't judge him till the playoffs." Yes, hundred percent. Don't judge. I'm not judging Evander Kane till the playoffs. I believe he's going to be a big name play or a big playoff guy for them this year. I think so too. I think he'll get up for it. But it's also not okay to go away for twelve games and not score when you're supposed to be the scorer. And I actually think Evander Kane's been pretty good the last few games. Yeah, he hit the ball the other day. He had a great. I will give him credit. The Fogel. first time they put him on the third That's line, around. he clearly pouted. But he's he's bounced back he's, in a better attitude yeah, way, hundred sure. percent. And I, I think just, it's the time of year. I think he's a little bit more dialed in because he's a guy that obviously wants to help the team. I'm not trying to like yes, paint him out to be something he's sure. not. But there are times like to just say Fogel can disappear. You have to point out Evander Kane can disappear too. Yeah, I Kane has been shifted around too much. No chemistry. Fogel's been moved around too much. He's played with every center in the last three weeks. Yeah, there's the argument for those two is isn't one. I just don't see how we can be like, Fogel's disappeared when Kane hasn't done this. And now Fogel's thriving. Now we're like, well, why is Kane not getting minutes? Like, Let's just take it yeah. one step at a time. Kane's playing fine on the third line. I think that third line will come around. I mm-hmm. agree with what Zach said, that they need to give them maybe a week, uh, 10 days or so here to keep going. And then other than that, if that doesn't work, then that is what it is. Um. All right. There was news from the Oilers in the prospect ranks. There was. They Connor went, Unger. Yeah, they signed Connor Unger out of Brock University. I think Ben Steiner was uh, the one who initially had the report okay. over the weekend. So shout out to Ben. Uh, but the Oilers make it official. Calgary native played with Brock this last year. 26 and 0, 20 pause, 6 and 0 record. 2.15 GA, 932. That, that's a really, really solid season at any level. He's going to report to the Condors. Here's where I think it's interesting, Liam. Okay. <laughs> Wind, Windhorst meme. Whoa. Why are the Oilers adding a young goalie into the system? Go on, tell me why. <laughs> well, you wouldn't want to run two young goalies at the American League level, would you? You'd like having a vet down there. Yeah. Maybe it's a sign that they're moving a young goalie up from Bakersfield next year. Is this maybe a sign that the organization is ready to elevate Olivier Rodrigue? And is this maybe a sign that they're buying out Jack Campbell this summer? I Yeah, it's a good layer of it. <laughs> and, what the fuck? Is Think about on? it. Think about it, Liam. <laughs> Look deeper. 
Don't buy what mainstream media is telling you about the Oilers goalie situation. Do your own research. <laughs> okay. Pick, Pickard and, uh, and what's his name? Unger in Baco next year. Ollie and Skinner up with the big club. <laughs> hmm. I mean, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting layer to it, and it would, it would make sense. I was kind of wondering on my way in where Anga would fit into the into kind of the depth chart. So they obviously have Ryan Fanti as well, who's, who they signed two years ago now, I think. Maybe this was even his full year as a pro. They've basically just put in the America, uh, in the East Coast League. Oh, sorry, ECHL is not the mm-hmm. East Coast League anymore. 9-12 save percentage, only played 13 games this season. So I don't really know what's going on with him. I remember he scored a goal once. That was pretty sick. Unger, though, on the other hand, former White Coat Wolverine. I remember he came in and played the Show Park Crusaders once, and boy, oh boy, he was really, really good. So you look through his numbers, wherever he's gone, he's he's had a really good track record of 900 or better save percentage. So one year in U Sports, 932 to then come into an NHL club, like credit to him. Like that's a, it's a quick turnaround for a goaltender in U Sports. I think he's only 22, yeah, 22. So I like your thinking there. Or maybe they bring up, um, what's his nuts? Fancy and put him in the American League instead of Unger, and then Unger has that year in in the coast. In the coast, because that's mm-hmm. kind of what happened with with Fancy too. If I'm not mistaken, he came in and stuck in Bakersfield for a little bit, and then they ran through. But I think you're 100 percent right. There will be a veteran goalie and a young goalie in the American League next season. I like you're thinking that title. Mm, yep. Because I'm not buying what mainstream media feeds me, Liam. Who is mainstream? What are you I talking don't know. About here? I don't know. Uh, Us? We we kind of are. No, we're not. <laughs> Daniel Nugent Bowman, he's mainstream media, and he's a damn good member of the mainstream media. He tweeted, good to get some organizational depth. Roderick and Fanti are set to become RFAs. Pickard is a pending UFA or UFA. Uh, and then there's Campbell. That was the end of st- And then there's Campbell. The end. And then there's Campbell. Uh, Daki, will Roderick's dad come up with him? Good question. Yeah. Also, oh, hey, let's talk about firing Dustin Schwartz. I'm Dustin, kidding. That's really mean. Goalies have, the Oilers have two really good goalies this season. Shout out Dustin Schwartz. No, he can't develop goalies. Rodrigue is on the cusp of coming up to, I mean, I guess he's done his work in the A. Stuart Skinner is unbelievable. Um, uh, Man, I, I know people knock Skinner for, and this is partially just a vibes play, but like when I watch him and I just look at Stuart Skinner, he's got the big upper body, yeah. Edmonton boy mustache sick last name skinner dope yep so drafted developed thrust into a starter role last year <laughs> that guy's gonna be the goalie for the oilers and he's gonna go on a run i think so too i fully believe in him i think he had a shaky game against buffalo i think he was fairly shaky to start with against um Washington on the first two or three shots of the yeah. game. And then he robbed Ovi three times. Jax, OMG, leave Schwartz alone. I know it's a joke. We literally we literally fought for him at the beginning of the year. So. Because we don't know enough. And all I can tell you now mm-hmm. is that the other goaltenders are playing pretty well. Yep. Realistically, thinking back to it, Mike Smith and Miko Koskinen was actually a pretty good time for this team. As Sometimes as you don't know what you have till it's gone. Yeah. Miko, Liko, whatever you wanted to call him. Uh, yeah. When we were doing our talk about how we love our sponsors and live with, we live our sponsor life. Yep. Someone was like, "Oh, so Tyler actually did get engaged?" I think it was dry. He's like, "That wasn't a joke." joke. No, yeah. not a joke. Um, that I, we did not stage these photos. Um, Amber's reaction was genuine. Shout out to Kennedy as well for like getting in as close as she did yeah, without like no I didn't hesitation. even I didn't even notice Kennedy was standing behind me on this one. I was just so dialed in. Amazing also, picture. Also, Amber just kept saying, uh, like, are you serious? Like for real? And I at one point I was like, down and I looked back at the ring and looked at her. I was like, Yeah. <laughs> what, <laughs> what do you what, think? What do you think? I'm <laughs> shitting around right now. Like, come on, figure it out. You anyway. guys look great. I'm so happy. Uh, it looks, what a view. Chemtrails. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Just saying, Liam, do your own research. <laughs> Let's get to the weekend recap for our friends at Greta. Oh. Your spot in downtown Edmonton. Amber and I did not go to Greta. Kind of regret that. That might have been a fun night. Uh, but our boy AB did. Greta? The- I do regret it not going there. You will not, though. The listener, pregame, postgame, during the game. I had someone DM me on Twitter. They're like, hey, is there a watch party tonight at Greta for uh, Edmonton, Colorado? And I was like, no. dude, 
just go watch the game there anyways. It, it's fun whether or not there's a watch party or not. So uh, big, big shout out to our friends at Greta. Weekend recap. Did you see the end of the Players' Championship? Okay, I watched I watched all of Saturday. Uh, most of Saturday, sorry. And I didn't see what happened, but I saw your tweet, then I watched what happened. Also, did, before... Okay, go on. You go on. It just, I, how that putt doesn't fall is insane. You feel for Wyndham Clark, one, if you watch season two of... Uh, the Netflix I golf show. Full swing. I haven't got full into swing. It. You love Wyndham Clark. You he really becomes a likable character, really? even if you don't like how slow he plays the games and certain things like that. Um, <laughs> sorry, Felix comment. <laughs> um, you really start to like Wyndham Clark, and when they have that shot of him and he's watching it, watching it, and the second it drops, he like starts his fist bump. He's like. And then you see the heartbreak, and it's like, oh, dude. So good for Scotty Scheffler. He grinded this weekend. That was a hell of a tournament. That got me so sorry for cussing. That got me so horny for major season, man. I can't wait for golf. Um, my friend and I were talking even before this because, as you, as many of you know, I was in a virtual golf league. And it's eleventh out of twelfth, twelfth. Um, he said to me, just playing golf. He's like, I cannot wait for golf season. He's like. I'm going to host a Masters weekend at my place. Oh, we'll sick. just go there for the Saturday, Sunday, and just watch the Masters for two days. I might do I'm that. Like, I'm in. I was like, that sounds awesome. And then I love golf season two. And that, right at the start is when I'm into it the most. And the players watching it this weekend got me so fired up. And it was like nice outside in Edmonton and just like, it was good. And also shout out to uh, Xander Schaffler for yet again not winning anything on sunday i like, know boy oh boy that guy he just needs a bit of a break but how about that one i don't know who it was because i saw it on twitter and it's the caption didn't say any names but where the ball literally just sat on the hole and then just didn't go in but it's like 10 seconds right i think yeah. that's what you get and they just waited and waited and waited and it didn't count but it was, that was crazy to see as well that was wild um also just yeah. golf season so Saturday, Amber and I go, like, we went and saw my parents, told them, went and saw her parents, told them. And then uh, we were sitting there like, oh, so what do you want to do now? Like, you just got engaged. Like, All right. And it was like, the driving range by our house is oh, open. Oh, I saw that. Oh, yeah. so we went to the driving range, man. And, like, I've been hitting in the sim all, all winter, going kind of, like, usually once a week. Yeah. The feeling of just being back out and, like, just pulled on my seven iron and just hit a couple of high shots. And it was just like, oh, this feels unbelievable. Nice. I'm so happy that the ranges are starting to open again. Um, so who who do you think is going to? I know we're a couple of weeks out, but do you have an early favorite for the Masters? I don't have an early favorite for the Masters, but I will say this: Nick Taylor is going to win a major soon. He he's gonna do it. He's gonna be the next yeah, Canadian. I think it's probably he's the yeah. best chance. Yep. Corey Connors is right up there too, but yep. like he's I don't know something about it. But he's always there on Sunday. Yep. Corey Connors always goes in Sunday well. And he plays Augusta very, very well on yeah, top of that, too. I, uh, I can't wait. i got to get into full swing. Do it. I, I want to talk about it with tonight you. Tonight, I've got some extra time, alone time. So I'll dig into the first couple episodes and watch. I, yeah. haven't watched, I haven't watched anything. All I watch is Bob's Burgers and Gilmore Girls. Mm. I know. This is my life. Bob's Burgers and Gilmore Girls. Although, I did watch the movie The Holdovers on Saturday night. If you guys have seen that, haven't seen that one, I would highly recommend it. It was an Oscars nominee. Okay. It was amazing. It was so cool and like very interesting concept thing and very funny. I feel like I really, yeah, it's on Prime. I really glossed over the Gilmore Girls thing. You guys should watch that too. Great show. Okay. Although I've heard, uh, I've never seen it before, but I've heard uh, when they do the reunion, not as good. Uh, DMB tweeted, Vinny says he's good to go for tomorrow. If, but I mean, I think that's an if called upon thing. That's not Vinny's call. Yeah. So he did say, sounds like the finger's not an issue. So there is that. Uh, let's get to our sounds of the oil. It's brought to you by Snow Valley Aerial Park and Rainbow Valley Campground. We were just talking about how great it is that the weather's turning while well, the aerial park opens up on May 31st. Hey, if you're from out of town, you're like, I want to experience Edmonton in the summer. Why not come to the only campground in the city? Take advantage of the over 60 sites and three comfort camping domes right in the heart of Edmonton at rainbow-valley.com. Sounds of the oil. Wanted to give a little bit more love to our boy Sam Carrick, who, when speaking to the media after the game, said, quote, it's nice to get the first one, especially at home. Obviously a great play by Pers. 
pairs, he called them pairs instead of Corey Perry. Pairs. Hockey players like giving each other nicknames. Uh, obviously, a great play by Pairs to kick the puck up there. A heads up play. I heard it was his 900th NHL point. So that's pretty awesome. And there's a reason why he's been around that long making plays like that. He's fun to play with. That might be a duo that works come springtime, Liam. Yeah. Yeah. I think it will be. I, that, goal, that assist from Perry was pretty sick, wasn't it? Quite funny that you can just openly kick the puck like that anywhere on the ice unless it goes in a net pretty dumb like so i think it it was so far off the ice too (laughs) i think the rule should be on kicking goals by the way and i've had this take this is not just because i'm salty about hyman if your skate is on the ice it's a good goal no matter what i agree i completely agree if the puck's lobbed up in the air a player can turn around and hit it with their ass and it'll count yeah but with their skate, you can't. And I get it. It's a danger thing. You don't want guys lifting their skates up in the air. So if your skate's totally off the ice, it. it's no goal. Also, I, I I don't think that goal should have counted. But that alternate angle of I'm getting like slightly mm. slew foed was a little interesting to me. Yeah. Uh, the menu for DoorDash delivered. Or <laughs> Let's restart that. The menu for DoorDash, 25% off, zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more. All you need to do is download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code NATION25. Take advantage of the Double Dash feature. You love that, Liam. I get do. a Slurpee it's and a nice. slice of pizza delivered at once. Woo! I showed the double dash to my girlfriend a few weeks ago, and she truly could not believe it. She's like, so I can get this and then ask them to stop at 7-Eleven to get me some chips as well? 100%. Yeah, you can. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, there's no or rules. Well, there's some rules, but Mr. Unlimited. Yep. The menu, new episode of Real Life dropping later on this afternoon. Also new on the website, our boy Sean Pang. Banger. Yeah. Dropping in a nice little look in at Sam Carrick. So check that out at OilersNation.com. And you're off this Friday. Sean's going to be my co-host on the show. Yeah, I won't be here, but Sean will be here. So I'm excited for him to see what he's got. Can he fill this role? Hopefully not too well. But I would like to keep my job. Mm -hmm. But hopefully well enough that I can take more days off. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. Uh, on my personal menu today, I have a ton of Big Brother Canada to catch up on, and I'm going to try and knock out two more episodes of Full Swing. How many episodes are they? Eight. And they're like 45 minutes each. Very digestible. People follow me on Letterboxd and said I only reviewed Dune. That's a lie. I have a full list of all the movies I've watched in 2024. Liam.movies. One day. One day. Slash Instagram. Uh, Okay, (laughs) wrapping up for Wendy's in the Daily Face-Off Survivor Pool. Download the Wendy's app today. Take advantage of a deal. How about this? $3.49 for a six-pack of nuggets? Hello! Pew, 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 pew. Download the Wendy's app today. Be a winner at lunchtime and try to be a winner on the Daily Face-Off Survivor Pool. Your options for tonight are... Oh, I haven't looked at this yet. I'm going Buffalo over half a power play goal. Let's roll. Oh, I'm going to go... Oh, we go. Yep. Ah, uh, no. I don't know. I'll have a look. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I kind of like, I the day one, you got to go easy. There's no need to go big. Buffalo to get a power play goal. Buffalo to get a power play goal. Calgary, Calgary win, maybe. Tuck to get a point. Don't hate that either because, you know, he's on their power I'll play. I'll do my research. Okay. Do your own research. Dailyfaceoffsurvivor.com. Get early your picks in. in. Um, I'm I think following what this mainstream media is pushing on me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, tomorrow, short for giant game day, the return of a very tanned and jet lag Jay Downton. <laughs> yeah, he's it's gonna take him a few days, maybe a week, arguably. Mm-hmm. Wednesday, maybe Frank, maybe. Mm-hmm. Who did he play tomorrow? Buffalo, uh, Montreal. Yeah. All right, that's a wrap on today's edition of the show. A big thank you to everybody who dropped in their congratulations in the chat. I'm very excited to wed wed. Also, on your way out, leave a like. We're at 122 likes. We didn't have a goal, but that's I'm, fine. I'm trying to sponsor my entire wedding. So if you own a wedding venue around the city, let me know. I'm catering open. Catering company. We need a catering, catering company. company. Sure. Uh, if Suits. If you work at one of the many breweries around the city and will give yeah. me a deal on booze, what else do we need? Yeah, Talking Suits. You, jerks. you did Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. Basically, the same caliber yeah. wedding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, if any of those vacation things we've done in the past <laughs> come back. Or... Dacky Nation Vacation Bachelor Party. Gotcha. Go. Honestly, to offset the cost, if I did a table of listeners, <laughs> my wedding, I'm, Amber, don't worry. Won't do it. Maybe. She's a podcast listener, so we can just mix in these. <laughs> Amber, don't worry. But She's, oh, really, would, anyone, would anyone want to come? <laughs>
nationgear.ca for a little uh, auction. Also, a week four of the Brownlee auction. You get a chance to come uh, hang out with Liam and I at the Oilers Nation offices, and we'll give you the last Pilsner in our fridge. Yep. You can come have a beer with us. We'll have to get more Pilsners then, I guess. <laughs> you can have a beer. We'll watch. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. also cleaned up the office the other day, so that'll be good. Somewhat. I got to redo it still. All right. There you go. That is a uh, <laughs> live stream, the wedding for charm. Would be hilarious. Uh, okay. That's a wrap on today's show, everybody. We went late. We'll be back tomorrow. Short for giant game day. See you right here on the Oilers Nation YouTube at Noon Mountain. Thank you for watching Oilers Nation every day. Hit the subscribe button to never miss a show. And for more, visit OilersNation.com.